All right, we're gonna get started here on 13.3. We're gonna do some our arc lengths in space. So we're doing this in three dimensions now. Uh, so here uh, we have smooth curves. We can uh, be scaled like number lines. Uh, the coordinates of each point being its directed distance along the curve from a pre-selected base point. Uh, so what we're doing is essentially moving along like this uh, as we go along, okay? And I maybe don't want to use the highlighter. So what we can do is go ahead and use this formula here. It's very similar to the one uh, that was earlier back in, I believe it would have been in Calculus 2, um, where you did arc lengths, but this time it's in three dimensions. And just to go over it again, essentially what we have is DL, a, you know, we have some curve, and we're taking some little infinitesimal DL along it, and uh, the little vector there, and, no, not a vector, just an arc length, a little line across it there, and what we're doing is setting that equal to, uh, you know, basically DL squared equals DX squared plus DY squared plus DZ squared. So it's like the Pythagorean theorem where as we move along that we have a little bit in X and a little bit in Y and a little bit in Z. So we have like a DX, DY, DZ situation. That was a Z it's supposed to be. DZ situation going on. So it's just Pythagorean theorem uh, but with tiny little changes. And then what we're going to do is take the square root of both sides. So I can... Uh, I can just rewrite this here again. Let me grab that, move it up slightly. Copy it, paste it here. I'm not sure if this is actually faster than me having written it, but there it is. So I can get rid of that squared, take the, take the square root of both sides like that. And then what I need to do is integrate both sides. All right, and when I do this integral on the left, I get just L, the integral of DL is L. And we're doing this uh, from point A to point B, and so from A to B, this is simply the length of the curve, then L, from A to B. And then over here, what we have to do is, well, that integral is a bit <laughs> tricky to take. We can't really do it. So what we're gonna do is multiply by DT over DT, like that, and then what we can do is take the denominator and square it and bring it inside and distribute it inside the square root. So what we end up on this line is still our integral from A to B, and we're integrating over dt, and what we'll have is dx squared uh, plus dy squared plus dz squared. We're gonna bring this denominator dt inside and square it, and it becomes dt squared dt squared, dt squared, like that, and then a dt on the outside. And now this is the uh, formula that is essentially right there. Uh, all you have to do is just, instead of dx squared over dc squared, it's just dx dt squared. Okay, so like this one right here. So if you like that, good way to remember how to do this one, even though we'll see some simpler forms of it uh, coming up here in just a bit. Okay, but that's the form, and this is how we're going to go ahead and do it. And so here is a simpler form of it, because if you look back here, you notice that these are all the derivatives of each component of the, um, of the position vector. They are then being squared and square rooted and added up. And so essentially, we're taking the derivatives, which gives us the velocity. We're squaring all the components, adding them up, and taking the square root. That gives us the magnitude of the velocity. So this part right here, maybe do you need to move this down now? That part right there, this is the magnitude of the velocity vector right there, okay? And so you come over here, we have this simplified version down where that's what we're doing, the arc length formula. All right, up to you if you wanna remember it as the way I derived it here or remember it as the integral of the magnitude of the velocity vectors. Uh, so here is an example. A glider is soaring upward along a helix. R of t equals cosine t for i plus sine t j plus t k. How long is the glider's path from t equals 0 to t equals 2 pi? Uh, so for this, again, 
what we need to do is find the velocity vector's magnitude, and we do that by taking the derivative of each one of these. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, the derivative of sine is cosine, the derivative of t is just one. Square all those, add them up, take the square root. Okay, those are all the, you know, we needed the dx dt and the dy dt and the dz dt from right there, which would have been then squared, squared, squared and added up and taken the square root. Okay, that's what's essentially being done right here. And then integrate this over dt. Well, negative sine squared is just sine squared. So this is sine squared, right? And then cosine squared plus cosine squared. So sine squared plus cosine squared is one. And so we have one plus one squared, that's one plus one, that is two. So we're just doing the integral of the square root of two uh, from zero to two pi, and then that just becomes square root of two times t, and then you plug in the zero to two pi, and there's your answer. Okay, that's how long it is along that path. Okay, um, this is square root of two times the circumference of the circle in the plane y over which the helix stands. So essentially what we're saying is, uh, had they just been going around the circle, right, all the way around once, it would have just been the 2 pi, but because they are also moving up into the air, this is actually a longer path, uh, and it's longer by square root of 2 times uh, the circumference of that circular path, right? So if we projected it all down at every point, it would land on that circle, but we also have that upward motion, and so we have a longer distance traveled, okay? Uh, and here, here's another picture of that as we go around that one up to here in that example, okay? Uh, here, uh, you have a directed distance along the per curve. So this is very similar to what we were just doing, uh, but this time what we're looking at is adding up all the magnitudes of all these vectors along here, right? And we add them all up and get this directed distance as we're going from P of t naught to p of t, it's different than going the other direction from p of t to p of t naught. And so we have this directed distance. It has a direction to how we calculated it. And so it's just the vector function as a function of tau. We're doing tau now so that this doesn't match your limits of integration. You can't integrate over t uh, from something to t. So those have to be different. So we introduced the tau there to make that difference. Sometimes you might see this where they do, uh, where they'll say you, it's V of T like this, um, DT, and then your limits of integration would be like T naught to T prime or something like that. Or maybe even sometimes I've seen it where they make these the primes, V of T prime, DT prime, and integrating from T naught to T. So something like that. But you just have to make sure those limits of integration are different um, than your integration variable, okay? So here it is, uh, all expanded out here, where you've got uh, the derivative of the x squared. So again, this is like the dx, d, you know, dx d tau getting squared, and the dy d tau getting squared, and the dz d tau getting squared, and then all square rooted. So it's the magnitude of that still, of that velocity uh, vector right there is what that is. And so let's try using this. Find the arc length parameterization of a curve r of t equals cosine of t in the i direction plus sine of t in the j direction plus t in the k direction. All right, so let's take a look here. Uh, we can do this by doing, uh, by finding the velocity vector v of t. Uh, and we'll do this as, um, We'll do v of t prime, actually. And then we'll do uh, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Actually, maybe I will make it the tau just so I stay with it. v of tau, sine of tau, negative sine of tau in the i direction, uh, plus the cosine of tau in the j direction, plus just 1 in the k direction, like that. And then, of course, we have to then square it and take the square root to get the magnitude of v of, not t, but tau, 
All right, so we'll do that. So this will be sine squared of tau plus cosine uh, squared of tau plus one squared, all square rooted. And then that's just gonna equal, again, the square root of two. So similar to what we had on that one a uh, few pages back. And then we just have to integrate this from t naught to t. We're integrating the square root of 2 d tau, like that. And then we're going to end up with just square root of 2 times t um, minus t naught. I can really write that out for you. Square root of 2 times uh, tau evaluated from t naught to t. And now you see why we need those to be different, because we can't evaluate t from t naught to t. And so this just becomes square root of 2 times t minus t naught. Okay, that's that one. Sorry, I flipped a little fast there. So that's that one. And then uh, the next one here we've got, uh, we can find a what is called a unit tangent. So essentially this is the unit velocity vector. Because the velocity vector is tangent to the curve, we get a, func a vector that's tangent to the curve at a point. If we divide it by its own magnitude, we have a vector that is tangent to the curve and of unit length. And that's what we're calling that uh, the unit tangent there, t. And so we can do this right here. Take the derivative of the, of the position function that gives you the velocity and just divide it by its own magnitude. So dr ds is equal to dr dt over ds dt, which is just v over the magnitude of v. Okay? Uh, here is an example of it. Find the unit tangent vector uh, of the curve. So just go through, find the derivative right here of each component. So this is the derivative of that, this is the derivative of that, and this is the derivative of that for the i, j, and k components. Let me get rid of all that. Uh, and then take the magnitude of it here. Once you find that, find the magnitude of it. So, you know, it would be 9 sine squared t plus 9 cosine squared t plus 4t squared, like that. The sine and the cosine would just become a 1. You'd factor out that 9, and it's 9 times sine squared t plus cosine squared t, which is just 1, plus the 4t squared. So that goes to 1, and you have 9 plus the 4t squared, and of course, put it underneath the square root. Okay? So that's where that came from. And then combine the two together. You have got the uh, velocity vector function divided by the magnitude or the speed function. And you can just combine them together, divide each component by that square root of 9 plus 4t squared, and you've got it. There's your answer. Okay? Uh, looking on this page, uh, here we have counterclockwise motion around the unit circle. Now counterclockwise rotations are considered positive. Uh, so that would be positive rotations that would be occurring there as we moved around it counterclockwise. Clockwise is considered negative. Uh, here, I believe this is the last thing we have to do, and this is what is dr ds now? Instead of dr dt, um, we're looking at how does, um, how does our radial function change uh, with respect to our s function here, right there, with respect to our arc length function over here, which is what our s was. Okay, so when we go to do that, uh, nice little derivation here since ds dt is greater than zero, s is one to one and therefore has an inverse. Uh, that means that we can take ds dt, that means we have a dt ds. And dt ds is 1 over ds dt, because remember these first derivatives uh, do act as though they are, act as algebraic structures. You know, so like x over y equals 1 over y over x kind of a thing is what we're doing there. And we know ds dt, that's just the speed, all right, our, our speed function there. And then down here, uh, you know, notice these are both scalars. So... Uh, that's our speed function. And then dr ds, what we're looking for, if we use the chain rule, dr dt times dt ds, those dt's cancel, and it's dr ds. So we can chain rule this. 
We know dr dt is the velocity, and we know dt ds, we just found, is the speed. So it's just simply the velocity times the speed, and it turns out that dr ds is our tangent unit vector right there. Okay? Uh, I think that is it for this section. Yep. And so the next one we'll finish on and continue on to 13.4. Uh, so thanks a lot for listening.